I'm in. Oh, it worked. <laughs> in other fire-related news, the VFX team has also been creating the test bed for a voxel-based fire system, seen here in a very early, simple implementation designed for prototyping. Run away! We also have a look at the inside of the current part white box, part gray box progress of the upcoming cargo decks, currently scheduled to come online later this year. As we mentioned in last week's player trading app segment, future iterations will tie into gameplay here, where folks will be able to leave things for consignment, providing a place for the storing and transfer of goods for both players and NPCs alike. Over this quarter, we've been following along with the early development of our upcoming refinery decks, and we're here now with another look at current white box, gray box look dev. The refinery decks are meant to occupy a separate space within the rest stops from the more commercial areas. These are where players come to handle their more industrial needs, from refining mined materials, to picking up mining related missions, or even buying new mining equipment. One of the larger elements of these locations are the blazing heat generated from the open smelting facilities and blazing slag being poured into vats. Refinery decks are intended to be utterly industrial, from the large metal clinging to the shouts of the workers all around. When creating creatures in a game, there are many different approaches you could take at the beginning. You could start off doing something simple, for example, like fireflies or little rodents or things that are you know, fairly simple from an AI perspective. That could be one approach. In the past, we created a void in, in that same kind of vein. Later on, we started exploring things like spa the space cows and the space whales. And while those are still gonna happen, we have, are now focused on something that hopefully players and developers alike get a little more excited about, and that would be predator creatures. situation nice hard shell at the top soft busy high frequency areas on the bottom and the cockpit that looks not like a human technology at all so she's uh, kind of a queen of a, of a hive and we'll have some sort of baby ones that all have some bioluminescence and one way you might encounter this is the large queen can actually hunker down and sort of uh, disguise herself as a, a group of rocks where you might end up walking right up on one and not even know it's there until it actually reveals itself. The second one we wanted to focus on is a creature that you would find on the planet Microtech. Uh, Microtech being a terraformed world uh, has an appearance more like Earth where you see pine trees and things like this. So we took a much different approach to the way we designed that creature. This creature we're determining is more of a result of maybe some genetic manipulation of, of different uh, DNA from Earth creatures. So there are some more familiar elements to this animal. Speaking of pyromaniacs and what might be the best or worst segue I've made all season, it's time for another look at early work on the planets of the pyro system, in this case, Pyro 2. 
Now, in the original galactic guide for the Pyro system, Pyro 2 was said to be a coreless planet that once held significant mineral deposits and became the victim of a, of a metal rush that quickly picked the planet clean, leaving it little more than an empty husk. And, well, we may have to revisit that assessment before all is said and done. Similar to our look at Pyro 1 last month, this is early work on the planet's surface alone, so you can expect plenty of changes and improvements along the way before it gets plopped into the Pyro system with its family of other planets. But it's fun to showcase what Planet Tech V4 can cook up in a new world's very early days. AI improvements like cover usage, shotgun assault tactics, and a better sense of when to move and hold position all aim to make FPS engagements with non-player characters more dynamic and interesting than ever before. Visual improvements to the M50 and balance changes to the car 2 wall mean there's something new to look forward to for owners of these speedy and nimble spacecraft respectively. Grimhex is getting a new shop new hangars, and a new viewing area to support the future release of scramble races. Not to be left out, new Babbage is getting hangars and perhaps a more impressive new shop of their own with the upcoming factory line and its new array of Mobiglass variants players can purchase. Then the various planets and moons all throughout the Stanton system are seeing the return of outposts, derelicts, and caves that were lost after the conversion to Planet Tech V4 but now with improved lighting, exterior dressing, and protection from the weather elements outside. So extend past items though, they can, they can be groups of people. They could be something like, let's say, Ninetales Outlaw Pack. If you see a Ninetales symbol on a ship, or on a piece of armor, or, or even spray painted on the wall in a location, that may tell you to either avoid that area or head on in, depending upon whether you're friends with that group or you're enemies with it. And, and we're going into this level of detail because it, it really will enrich in the game, uh, make it feel more alive and lived in. It'll help provide context and color. It'll, it'll deepen the history to help explain how we have gone from here to there. So by doing this, we hope to make the, the world more familiar and relatable to players and just in general, more immersive. <laughs> because really, what, what's more immersive than seeing brands everywhere you look? Members from the Environment Art team are continuing their work adapting the gas cloud tech originally developed for Squadron 42 to be used in the Persistent Universe, like this test for the spacecaping of service stations that sit along Lagrange points throughout the Stanton system. Now, work like this will not only be used to bring added texture and visual breakup to the system, but it's also anticipated will add a fair number of new gameplay opportunities as well as we continue to explore the various ways we can incorporate this tech across the breadth of Stanton's various points of interest. Finally, before we let you go, some very early updates for one of Star Citizen's original five spacecraft, including work on the Constellation Taurus's expanded cargo bay, and early prototyping of an automated docking process for the Merlin and Archimedes into the Constellation's custom docking port. It's early days yet, but the promise of being able to launch Parasite craft from the Constellation just got one step closer.
<laughs> and it's it's pretty fun to drive because it's somewhere in between like an Ursa Rover and a Cyclone. It's not as fast as a Cyclone and uh, not as slow as an Ursa Rover. It has a good turning radius, but not, still not as good as a Cyclone. But it's 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 got some pickup to it, and it's it goes pretty quickly. And we want it to be nimble so it could kind of make turn around and kind of find those rocks around other rocks possibly in the future get into caves that kind of thing and no i think it's pretty fun now from crusader the gas giant you've also got orison our last major landing zone from St for Stanton, and unlike any other landing zone, it, no walls. T talk to us about yep. Orison. Yep. So, um, you know, we've been very eager to work on Orison for quite some time. Um, it's always had a little special place in my heart, right? Uh, but it's it comes with its own unique challenges. So, as we've been working our way through. Um, Stanton, you know, we've had to adapt and overcome to whichever visual challenge that that location demanded. Um, and I like to think that with when we released New Babbage, we kind of improved in many different areas. And what I want to do is keep that momentum and apply it to Orison and, and take it further. So obviously Orison is a very um, open landing zone. It's all about that vista. So then there's kind of nowhere to hide. And what we want to do is we want to really think about the restrictions we add to the player to the point where those restrictions are very minimal. Um, so literally, um, we have a massive open vista landing zone where we want the player to explore. So um, lots of challenges, lots of creative challenges for us to solve. Also, as we've t uh, we said previously, when we originally thought about Orison, um, our idea of what a landing zone needs is is a little bit different. So, uh, as you saw in someone like New Babbage, we introduced new elements like you know um, food stores, uh, more complexity with bars, things like this. And with Orison, it, it's the same, but there's going to be more. You know, there's going to be shipping locations, there's going to be personal storage locations. So what that landing zone needs is more intensive than uh, previous. So with all of these things kind of considered, plus the fact that the work that we're already doing in Stanton, this is what's kind of given us our, our kind of like our preliminary release window. And, you know, we wanted... Uh, more than anything for it to be this year. You know, we tried really hard, but ultimately it comes to the point where we looked at it and we're like, there would be too much of a sacrifice to quality. The sacrifice would be on a player. And for me and, and Todd, it, that's not really the route we want to go down to. There's always a, a player first uh, approach that we should do. So then when we do release it, you know, it's not a disappointment. <laughs>